All right, we're going to continue our discussion of the skeletal system. And anytime I start a new organ system, I like to talk about the functions because it really gives you an understanding of why we're learning this organ system. And then it'll follow along as we actually develop more of the details. So when we think about the skeletal system, a lot of times we think about it as a support system. It keeps us upright, particularly when we're talking about Homo sapiens. It allows for us to stand bipedally and on two legs. So it is that. That's one of the main functions. It's a structural framework, but importantly, one thing I want to talk about, and we'll talk about this in great more detail when we're talking about the individual bones, is in terms of as an attachment point. So you're going to have these ligaments and these tendons actually attaching to certain parts of the bone. So muscle tendons, particularly when you have these big bumps, associated with bone, these are going to be attachment points. So when you have the muscle attached there, it'll contract and allow for movement to occur. Additionally, it's going to protect certain other internal organs. So the two main ones that you think of, you think of your skull, that calvaria or skull cap protecting the brain. You think of your rib cage or thorax protecting your lungs as well as your uh, heart. It's also important to think about areas where you don't have as much uh, bone protection. So if you think of your abdomen, you don't have any bones right here in the anterior part of your abdomen. So you have to have other structures that are uh, serving to protect those areas. So really important in terms of the muscles as well as the tendons in those areas protecting. All right, hugely important in terms of the skeletal system, system, assistance in movement. So if you think about those attachment points and where they're actually attaching onto the bone, if that muscle contra uh, contracts, that's going to move the bone. So the muscle contracts, the muscle shortens, it will pull on the bone, allowing for movement to occur. Now, this is more important when you think about how the bone's actually structured. You're going to have certain areas that are completely hollow in bone, that's filled in with fat, etc. You'll have other parts of the bone that are not quite as heavy. This is allowing for that ease of movement. So very important in terms of that. So the three that I just mentioned in terms of the functions are what we all typically think of when we think of the skeletal system. But there's other functions that are just as important. And particularly in terms of keeping homeostasis within the body. And so one of the main ones is mineral storage and release. And we all have heard drink your milk, get that calcium into your bones because uh, bone is going to store 99% of the calcium in your body. But calcium is important in other areas of the body as well. So you'll have calcium sometimes released into the blood in order to allow for the, your gastrointestinal tract to function properly. And so bone can, uh, calcium can be released from bone to allow for homeostasis to keep up. So we'll talk about different ways and different um, glands, so in terms of your thyroid gland and your parathyroid glands, that will help keep the um, certain amounts of calcium within the bone or release it if need be. Phosphorus is another mineral that's uh, stored within the bone, not as quite as high amounts as calcium, but it will play a role in terms of uh, mineral release and storage as well. Now, Bone is also important in terms of hemopoiesis, and you'll talk about this a lot more with Dr. Fox when you t talk about his blood lecture, but actually within the bone, within the red bone marrow, you're going to have blood cell production. So all types of blood cell production, red blood cells, white blo blood cells, etc. And that's going to be formed within red bone marrow. So juvenile bones, so when I say the term juvenile, I mean a sub-adult or a young individual. Juvenile bones are going to have huge amounts of red bone marrow. As you move into adulthood, there's only going to be certain areas of bone that are actually going to form red blood cells. So if we talk about epiphyses, these are going to be the ends of long bones. And then in certain other bones, such as your oscoxa or hip bones, uh, certain areas in terms of the ribs in adulthood will still form these red blood cells. As you move into adulthood, a lot of that re red bone marrow is 
uh, differentiated into yellow bone marrow. And yellow bone marrow is what we think about when we think of bone marrow. It's that fatty, um, fatty tissue that's actually within that hollow portions of the bone. And so that's going to make up the majority of the bone marrow found in adults. Uh, it's important in terms of triglyceride storage. So that fatty storage of, um, as an energy storage for these yellow bone marrow. 